It's 9.45 on a Saturday night, and I'm here at the Esplanade at the Disneyland Resort because I didn't know I had a reservation tonight. Just realized about an hour ago, came down here to the park to, to do the thing, and I'm like, you know what? I think I'm gonna try and see how much I can get done in these last two hours of the night. Let's go. A lot of action here in the Esplanade, by the way, at 9.45 at night. The fireworks just went off. They were going off as I was rolling in on the Toy Story bus. You could hear them heading out, and I walked through an amazing crowd of people, a sea of guests leaving the park just now. Plus, you've got a bunch of guests, as you can see right here, of making the trek because uh, DCA closes at 10 p.m. Wow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So this is kind of like a reverse rope drop, isn't it? I love doing rope drops. I love doing rope drop recon. The first two hours in the morning on a rope drop day are critical. But I don't have a lot of reps doing that kind of thing here. I don't close the park very often. I have no idea. I mean, I've done it a few times recently on Fresh Baked, but I, I still don't have any kind of plan or, you know, like optimal usage of that time other than to Holy heck, there's a lot of people right here. That's right. It is actually a Saturday night, and as you know, tonight was candlelight procession. Just a few hours ago, my wife was sitting somewhere in these seats watching Brie Larson conduct the ceremonies here, the candlelight procession. Oh, if you've never play. seen this show, even video of it, you're missing out. This is one of the most spectacular things that Disney does. I, I always just sort of, eh, whatever, you know, like for the longest time that I've, that I've come to the park, it wasn't a thing that I really paid attention to, but last year I did this thing where I, I didn't have a spot, I didn't have a seat. So I, I watched the procession come down Main Street and then I just did laps up and down the, the main entrance in Main Street, trying to you know, kind of capture the essence of the show as it was happening, because you can't stop and film it. You can't stop and watch. Uh, it's just, you can't. There's it's too many people, and the, and the cast members are here, you know, just keep the people moving. And it was, kind of, man, it was breathtaking, that show. It was fantastic. Sandlot. Wow. I mean, seriously, I don't know. What's, what's this park gonna look like once I get past Main Street here? How empty, because this looks crazy. Un I mean, Space Mountain. I think I might try to see what happens at Space Mountain just prior to closing. So I'm going to save that for the end of the night. I also love the look on your face. I mean, there's Matterhorn. I don't hardly ever get to do that at night. Ooh, maybe that's where we'll start. Let's start there. Let's look like going this way. Now, as for strategies, I feel like we should be applying a similar strategy that we would at Rope Drop, focus entirely on lightning lane attractions. I have to believe that something similar will be the case at, at night, in the last two hours. Everybody's leaving. This is a good time to hit fast pass rides, light, right? <laughs> Oh my, <laughs> I overestimated, <laughs> I overestimated my chances at, at Matterhorn right off the bat. I mean, it, it's not all the way out there. This is just, the, it's just this part of the queue that's full, but it is full. Wow, I'm, okay, I'm gonna guess that's 30 minutes, which I was hoping to find, you know, I was hoping it would be better than that. Yeah, 30 minutes, look at that. Have I done this before? Let's get in this Matterhorn queue right now and see what's up. Oh, here we found the back already. It's right here. Things are moving fairly briskly, but I am seeing quite a bit of influence there in Lightning Lane, so I'm not sure how well this is going to go. We've been at this for about five or six minutes so far, and we're kind of going. 30 minutes seems optimistic. It actually went a lot better than I thought it would. Just 20 minutes, oh, I'm sorry, 15 minutes to the mix point. And then we got another five minutes here in the uh, interior part of the queue. So we're looking at 20 minutes to our right now. 
Incredible how dark that ride is, right? <laughs> I couldn't see anything. I was having a hard time figuring out where to put the cameras. First time I've shot Matterhorn uh, with this, with the uh, Pocket Three, with this camera. So, oh, can't pass that up. Yeah. So hopefully some of that came through. Uh, I will observe right now. Uh, that took about. Hold on, let me check my handy dandy notebook. Twenty-one, twenty-six minutes. 26 minutes all in, that includes the ride time, so it's like, yeah, 20 minutes to the vehicle. Unlike rope drop, or the opposite of rope drop, where as the morning progresses, as you get later and later into the morning, the wait times get longer and longer. The opposite is the case, obviously. When you do the last two hours, the longer the, the night goes on, the shorter the lines get. Case in point, Matterhorn. In the, tw in the 26 minutes since we got in this queue, four, one, two, three, three lanes have been cleared, which should put the standby wait time at about 20 minutes. And also, by the way, lightning lane is empty. That helps to clear it. So they still got it at 30, but it's not, tw it's not 30, obviously. They just haven't updated the queue. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's significantly shorter. Plus, like I said, they, they've cleared lightning lane. Not a lot of folks using Lightning Lane at this time of night. Most guests, I would imagine, have used up their allocation <laughs> for the day. Uh, I would, ex at least, especially on a Saturday, I should say. I mean, gonna head down to Toontown next. I mean, I could go to Small World. That's technically, well, I mean, it is literally a fast pass or Lightning Lane. I keep saying fast pass. That's a Lightning Lane attraction. Uh, but I could see already that that's a, a near walk-on, as it is. So. Uh, plus, that's a that's a long ride. You I know, mean, trying to maximize your time, and you know, in one of these efforts, like at rope drop or at the two hours before closing, you don't want to be in a, a super long attraction that that gobbles up a lot of your time to, to to get rides in. We did. We rope dropped near rope drop at 9 a.m. I want to say 9:30. I think both of those attractions in about 20 minutes during a rope drop morning. So I would imagine that uh, we could probably do something like that, but uh, I want to I want to verify what these attractions are like on the last you know the last two hours of the evening while we go through this queue. Because if I'm not mistaken, that 15 minutes should include the pre-show, the perfect picnic short, which is a few minutes, you know, three minutes, two minutes for the show and. A couple minutes to get guests in and out of the theater. So that's going to account for some of that 15 minutes also. So what I'm saying is we should be able to walk right through this, or most of it anyway. Not a lot of time to look around and enjoy the scenery though, right? Although I do want to get a shot of the beanstalk. I want to see if they updated it at all to uh, coincide with the changes that they did outside the attraction to have it grow outside the building. <laughs> I love that they added the sound effect back there of, of the stock actually growing and pushing through the building like that. I can see there's quite a bit of stalling back there in the theater or in the concession stand but still we should we should power through most of this in a few minutes
five minutes. short amount of time really and I have still not done loving that attraction it, it I'm hesitant to say that it's my favorite ride because I have so much respect for the Disneyland Railroad and Big Thunder and Irish Lip Chicken <laughs> it's just it's so terrific it's just the perfect ride it really is especially for modern attractions it's the perfect modern ride it's what a dark ride wished it could be, you know, a classic dark ride. Walt would love Runaway Railway. Things are definitely still very chill here in Toontown. So I think we are gonna take a run at Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin. There's nobody approaching it. Well, there is now, <laughs> but it doesn't look like there's very many people in that queue right now. It says 25 minutes. I came through here once, twice in a row, where it was posted at 50 and it took about 15. I don't remember what it was when we rope dropped it at 9 a.m. I want to say it said 10 or 15 minutes also. It is presently 10.52 p.m. Two attractions in 52 minutes. Ah, that's okay. I was, for a minute I thought this experience might be quicker. We'll get more done in the last two hours than we would at Rope Trap, but that's starting to fail because we just hit the back of the queue already. 20 minutes later, there's our boat. Well, I gotta say, that definitely took longer than I thought it would. I mean, the wait time was posted at 25, but I thought we were we really didn't think we were gonna zip through there. But it was almost all of that 25. It took us 20 minutes to get to the vehicle. So what, what, what are we at now? We're at three attractions. It's 11.20. We've done three attractions. That's not the best pace, but I know we're gonna get at least four. And I would say at Rope Drop, the standard, the benchmark is five. Four is easy, five is doable, six is even possible. At Rope Drop, the last time I Rope Dropped, I did five. And I, I, had, I had time to get into one more attraction, what we called it. But I know we're going to get four because we're going to hit Space Mountain just before closing. So we should get to five if it's, a, if it's 20 after. Where are we going? I don't want to do Small World. I suppose there's Big Thunder. There's Haunted Mansion. There's Indiana Jones. I don't know, man. Now, I know what some of you might be asking at this point. David, why don't you take this opportunity to do stuff like, uh, you know, Pirates or, or Peter Pan or just, you know, knock out a bunch of rides and dark rides and Fantasyland and that kind of thing. Yeah, I could do that, but that's too easy. You know, <laughs> yeah, of course I could knock out a bunch of dark rides, but it's not about quantity. Although 
we are trying to maximize that. We are counting attractions that we're doing, but it's not really about that. It's about, you know, how can we handle some of those difficult to do attractions, like Space Mountain and Big Thunder, and well, it's not exactly difficult, Big Thunder, but you know what I'm saying, like quality. Uh, so just like Rope Drop, I try to keep my analysis focused on lightning lane attractions because you know my my goal often whenever I do kind of recon sessions like this is to give people a chance a fighting chance <laughs> to not have to buy GD plus or individual lightning lane just give them a chance if you if you just follow the you know the guides or the you know the advice a little bit maybe you you know maybe I can help out and save you guys a little bit of money so that's why I have made my way to Frontierland. In the hopes of getting a good rep here on Big Thunder, I just realized I don't ever, <laughs> I don't ever use the tip board. I have no idea if this attractor is even up. Oh my gosh, that is a heck of a crowd. That's a, that's a 20 person group right there, maybe 30 that I just jumped in behind. Man, if I had just gotten here a minute sooner, that's two trains. That's two trains worth <laughs> right there. Oh my gosh. Uh, anyway, posted 15. It's 11.26. We're gonna hope to get this one done within 15 minutes. That'll take us to 11.41. And that will give us enough time to walk over to Space Mountain and get in the queue before you close. This thing's pretty good in the low light, but <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling the darkness right now. We haven't had a stop, so 15 minutes is clearly not a thing. It's five, or however long it takes you to walk the length of the queue. Yeehaw. I removed my hat. As I mentioned, after riding Matterhorn, notice there's nobody in this queue now. It is, uh, let's see, 11.34, that's four attractions now in, what, an hour and a half? <laughs> now I feel pretty good. <laughs> now I feel pretty good about our performance. It was just a few minutes ago, it seems like, that I was like, ah, geesh, I don't know, how are we doing? But at 11.34, we're out in route if you wanted to I'm not gonna do that tonight but if you wanted to gain the system even further you could take this 26 minutes that we have before closing and do something quick let's say uh, a dark ride you know fantasy on dark ride you can jump on snow white or toads real quick before heading over to Space Mountain if the goal is to do Space Mountain you know, just get there, you know, five minutes before midnight or something like that. I'm not going to do that because uh, I'm satisfied with our with our evening at this point. <laughs> that, you know, we're going to be hitting Space Mountain here in about 10 minutes. And that'll be the end of our night. But like I said, yeah, you could get to, you could get it to a sixth attraction. In the same way that I was talking about how you could you could conceivably hit a sixth attract attraction at Rope Drop as well. But just look at how dead now the park is. <laughs> In this last half hour, right? It's a shame that you know we can't take advantage of this for more than just the next 26 minutes. But there you go. That is the benefit of enjoying Disneyland the last two hours of the evening. There's a site we're gonna have to get used to for a couple months. Astro Orbiter closed. Oh, ducks everywhere! Wow. Ducks, ducks, ducks. 
<laughs> suddenly that just reminded me, I'm gonna have to remember to talk about this when I do my construction report because uh, although you're seeing this after I publish that, I haven't, I haven't uh, edited it yet, but it reminds me of Finding Nemo. You guys remember when they said Finding Nemo was gonna be back winter of, I don't know, I think it was 2022. Do I have that right? And then winter came and went, and nothing <laughs> happened. And then they, oh no, what was it? Yeah, winter 20. Oh my God. Hi guys. Uh, I can't remember the year, but it was winter, and then, you know, winter of, you know, November, December, or December, anyway, came and went. And then January, February, and then said they just changed it to the year. I, do I have that right? I don't know, but it was, it was kind of comical how long that took for them to get Finding Nemo. I don't know. I'm making no sense. This, I'm not even sure if this bit is going to make the final video now because I'm so spaced out. Uh, we're in Tomorrowland. Quiet enough to really enjoy the loop. Again, I didn't check the app, by the way, so I have no idea if Space Mountain is still open, if it's closed or whatever, but I think it is. Oh, uh, nothing, nothing for Christmas. You know what, I'll get a better look at that in a minute when we get up the stairs, but uh, I was really hoping that they would do something there. Post-it says 30. Goodness. I mean, how legit do you think that is? 30 minutes? Seems like a lot for 20 minutes to midnight. There is a queue back there, look at that. The queue, oh my God, there are. Wow, I was not, I was again, just like uh, Roger Rabbit, I was expecting it to be a little better. And there's your lighting package on the mountain right now. Same one that they had when they opened. So no Christmas lighting package. I, I'm kind of, I'm low key disappointed. I'm low key underwhelmed. I don't find that lighting package to be particularly cool. Uh, I don't find it to be worth closing the attraction over. I'm hoping there's more than that at some point in the future, that they have some other bigger plans because if that's it, it seems kind of pointless. There's your queue inside right now. I mean, the good news is they're not using all those switchbacks back there. It's just a small little section in here, but it makes me wonder what the holdup is because I can't imagine there's a lot of light and light happening right now. I'm actually kind of shocked at the pace that we're going at right now. We got in this queue at 11.40. There's a lot of stopping. I even saw some lightning lane guests still going in there. We've been in this queue now for 15 minutes already. <laughs> Can you imagine? It's five minutes to midnight. There are still lightning lane. We're being held here. We have been. We've been in this hall. Uh, hall for a few minutes now. We're at 20 minutes. But there are still lightly. I saw some go by just now. It's wild. Is this us? Always one of the best moments <laughs> when going to Disneyland is that reveal of this room and the sound and the and the views. And, hey. <laughs> oh, I love Space Mountain. minutes it took us to get to our vehicle was not expecting that at all I thought this was gonna be a pretty breezy thing but that just goes to show you just how popular Space Mountain is and how much it needs to factor in your plans be that rope drop middle of the day or end of the evening 
for me at Disneyland, planning, strategy, everything starts and ends with how you approach Space Mountain. If your plan is to do a, you know, to close the park, and your plan is to ride Space Mountain, it should be the last attraction you do because if you do it any other time of the, of the night, you're going to lose a half an hour or 40 minutes. I lost five, effectively, because I waited till the end of the night. And then all that other time I spent in the queue. Theoretically, anyway, because I actually got in a little earlier. But the rest of the time you spend in the queue is after hours, so it doesn't really count. Does it follow? Is that math, math? Everybody's getting in their last minute shots. The night of the castle, and Main Street. Wonderful. <laughs> I tell you what, man, Main Street Disneyland after midnight is a vibe. Photo Pass is still out here getting those magic shots. Hey, that's it for us guys tonight. That was fun. It was enjoyable. A little surprise session. Was not expected to be here tonight. Was not supposed to be here, but we we made it work. And uh, now I can take the day off. Or tomorrow off, that is. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys, you know, this was helpful and useful information. File this away. If you're ever in the parks and you're gonna close it and you wanna know some good advice, I think we learned a few good things here tonight. Learned, definitely learned a few things. I, I do think this actually is a little bit more economical time-wise. Last two hours versus first two hours, rope drop versus closing. I think closing is marginally more efficient, time-saving, I think. So far, that's at least our first, you know, my first impressions of doing a proper analysis. Because the other times that I've closed this park, I was just messing around, doing whatever. I had no agenda. Let me know your thoughts. And then follow us on Instagram at underscore fresh baked on Twitter at fresh baked Disney that's fresh with e, and on TikTok at fresh baked Disney and if you like our show want to show your support please do consider joining our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash fresh baked otherwise thanks again for watching everybody we love you be safe out there be kind to one another fresh baked